Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a river scene, a winter river scene, inspired by the late great teacher and artist Ron Ranson, using um, my version of his sort of techniques, um, which is like big brushes. So I'll be using my Harky brushes and a rigger, maybe a flat brush, maybe a squirrel mop. I've drawn out a very simple a uh, basic scene here with a, a river sweeping around the bend, some lovely winter trees in the foreground and some distant trees on the river banks. And I'm going to paint this as a homage to Ron Ranson. Firstly, um, I'm taking a very weak watery mixture of raw sienna and I'm washing it across most of the painting um, with my Harky brush. Ron, Ron used to do this quite a lot. Um, he called raw sienna the great unifier um, and it's a really nice pale colour to take away from the stark white of the paper and just really um, it makes a wonderful sort of underpainting. My sky is going to be very plain and pale grey blue so I've mixed Payne's grey with ultramarine blue quite a watery mixture because I don't want it to be too strongly pigmented. I just want that kind of uh, very plain winter sky because the landscape is going to be dominant in this painting and not the sky. Using a slightly richer mixture and slightly bluer mixture of those two colours, Payne's Grey and Ultramarine, I'm going to start putting in distant trees, shadows and shapes um, allowing it all to just softly diffuse against the sky, which is still wet. Working quite quickly, um, Ron Ranson advocated the sort of fast and loose big brush method of watercolour painting, which was to try and sort of get things in reasonably quickly, but keep the brush strokes pure, the washes transparent, um, the tonal values good, um, and a minimum amount of brushwork really, so that the painting doesn't look overworked. I'm starting to get in my darks now with um, some burnt umber and Payne's grey. Getting some variety into the distant trees. Pulling down reflections into that icy river as well using the same colours as I'm using for the trees. Keeping those brush strokes vertical, which helps to create that illusion of water. And leaving some unpainted paper across the middle of the river and then putting in some of the sky colours across the foreground. And then I shall clean off and dry off my Harky brush, this time a small Pro Art Harky brush, and I'll pull out a line um, sort of, of white. I'll lift it out, and that will um, help to give the impression of kind of light on the water, ripples, that sort of thing. Keeping things nice and soft and nice and simple, just blocking in these rough shapes that give the impression of the scene, not really painting anything definite. Getting in those nice darks at the bases and starting to bring down um, the shapes for the banks. There's a full three-part lesson for this over on Patreon, um, fully narrated and showing just about every brush stroke and showing the drawing at the beginning if you're interested. So follow the link if that might be for you. As I add more darks to my tree line, then I'll add more darks to my reflections trying to keep things balanced as I build up a few more layers and start using stronger, richer, drier paint on top of the wet paint. 
that way I won't get runbacks. If you introduce um, wetter paint than what's already on the paper, you're in danger of causing um, cauliflowers and runbacks. So I'm making sure that I'm working from sort of pale through to richer, darker, drier paint to make sure I don't get those runbacks. Just softening back underneath there with a, a small squirrel mop just to give a slightly softer look to those um, distant banks and hills. And you can see I've now built up the foreground and with some nice rich darks with the Payne's Grey and the Burnt Umber, which will make the perfect sort of base for my foreground trees once the underpainting is dry. Now I'm going to use the corner of a plastic store card to etch through um, the rich paint. This was a favourite um, thing for Ron to do, a trick he called it, but I actually think it's, it's a really effective way of getting in some extra texture and pulling out some light marks and then moving the paint around, but with the tip of the of the card so that you sort of are almost drawing with the card and it looks really interesting and makes a good start for the trees. And finally with a clean damp brush I'll pull out one more sort of um, horizontal white waterline going back to the white of the paper across the foreground across the river just to add that extra sort of look of um, watery reflectivity. Now I'm going to wait for it to dry completely and I'll come back and finish the painting off. It's now completely dry so I'm going to mix up a puddle of inky consistency but very well pigmented Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber and using my number one rigger, I'm going to go over my pencil lines to paint in my trees and paint in more branches than I drew because I just put the basics in. But I want to make these trees stand out beautifully against the background. But I still want them to be quite elegant and quite th with sort of thin branches. keep going back in and reloading the rigger and then carrying on, trying to make sure that my tree trunks are all at slightly different angles and then bringing them back on the bank so that they kind of recede into the distance a little bit. I'm starting off at the base of the trees, pressing the whole of the brush against the paper and then pulling up a fairly thick brush stroke and then taking the pressure off the rigger and releasing it so that by the end of the brush stroke I'm only using the tip. That way I can go from quite thick trunks and branches to very fine branches and twigs. Just making sure that I've got those sticks and twigs coming up from the base of the riverbank. And maybe a few little twigs and sticks and little scrubby bushes on the far bank. And then having a look and seeing if there's any adjustments, any branches that don't quite look convincing that I need to maybe thicken or add a few more twigs to, all that sort of thing, just to get the painting to balance. And now for a final detail, a few dead winter leaves on the ends of some of the branches. This is a very dry mixture of um, burnt umber 
and just on the tips of a hockey brush that I've just sort of smashed up a bit on the palette to break up the chisel edge and I'm stippled on just a few dead leaves. And then just to add variety and a bit of extra texture on the ground using that sort of stipple here and there just to break up the flat planes of paint with a few tiny bits of extra texture. And that's finished, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, Ron Ranson was one of my earliest influences when I first started watercolour painting over three and a half years ago. And I'm still very, very fond of his techniques, his methods, his whole ethos. And if you're looking for beginner's watercolour books or videos, then I think that you would really enjoy the work of Ron Ranson. I'm removing the tape and you can see now the tape is off that the painting itself um, looks a lot more finished a lot more complete um, and we're sort of seeing it, it with fresh eyes almost as if it was in a frame I think this limited palette of Payne's Grey, Ultramarine Blue, Raw Sienna and Burnt Umber is really effective here oh and of course the star the white of the paper well, I hope this was helpful and um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you click on the bell icon, then you'll be notified every time I post a new video. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.